good afternoon uh, mr tata uh, thank you so much for joining us uh, today it's really a pleasure uh, for you to address all the entrepreneurs in the ecosystem and we really appreciate your sharing the time with us thank you uh, hello it's it's a, it's a pleasure to be with you in at times like this thank you so much sir uh, mr tata needs no introduction uh, we've had the pleasure of course and privilege of having mr tata on our global advisory board where immense learning immense guidance has happened over the last four years and i'd like to thank you again mr tata for that um, as you're aware uh, you know this is a very different time uh, from perhaps what uh, uh, anybody or yourself have seen uh, in the earlier days and i'd like to start off by um by perhaps an interesting uh, anecdote uh, you you're finding yourself at home right now uh and this must be very very new um overall in the last few weeks uh, how's been your experience working from home it's a different experience uh, on the one hand the the danger is that your productivity is is sort of uh reduced because everybody's dispersed uh, particularly for me uh, there's been very little video conferencing or or uh, video meetings so there's um uh, a learning a learning experience which many of you already have because of the business that has been the way you you're living with your mac pro out of your uh, briefcase your office is where you are and that has not been the case with me hmm um and i I've, i've been perhaps more old fashioned i need to have paper to feel comfortable with a note or to immerse myself in a note rather than look at a screen but that learning comes pretty pretty fast because we're doing the same thing and and after a few minutes you forget that you're looking at a face on a screen and you're looking at something in real time uh the the catch is that the times are different mm -hmm. uh and not only are we looking at a different landscape but we are looking at uh ourselves in a landscape that we have never seen before uh none of us have uh been able to compare this with with uh, any calamity that we had before we can know we've always been able to relate ourselves to a geographic area where we can escape uh the particular circumstance Mhm mm this is the first time in my experience that we have a, a situation where there is no place to go there's no place to sit free of this area there's no place to consider uh an escape everywhere we go everywhere we look whatever decision we take has an impact not only on one part of the world but everybody uh so it's a totally different experience and one which is difficult to relate to in terms of what should we do where should we go it seems like there's an undercurrent of getting rid of the 
the problem, the, the virus, before we can say what the new normal is going to be, we don't know when that's going to take place, whether it is going to take place in the first place, or it will be stretched out to next year, if then. So there's a bit of tentativeness in this, and I, I seek your indulgence in, in talking to you on, on this, because I, I think it's wrong to say that this will happen by this period of time. We hope it will. Sure, sure. But it may not. And if it may not, maybe the route to go is another route. And with due respect, you and I and others sitting at home uh, are not seeing the the darkest part of the scenario that we're talking. We're not seeing the hunger. We're not seeing the the um, despair. We're not seeing the separation of families. We're not seeing. Uh, keeping distance, which is not difficult for us, but uh, around us, we have abject poverty. We have great concentration of people in close proximity. And then we're asking, what will the world look like? And so repeatedly, I think we'll in this conversation have an issue, certainly from my side of saying, I don't know. No, no, absolutely. And uh, you're absolutely right that, uh, you know, some of us uh, are obviously privileged and there is a lot of hardship uh, at the uh, workers, the migration uh, laborers, and a lot of people who need to even earn a daily living. Absolutely, we agree with you. Uh, coming back to entrepreneurs, um, in this uh, pandemic, uh, the scenario which seems to be multidimensional, all the other earlier ones, which at least I've seen are financial in nature. And this one is finance, this one is health, this one is travel, this one is, you know, everything you can think of, uh, including the fact that countries are sort of locking down. Um, entrepreneurs uh, are, are bucking up, they're cutting costs. Um, and uh, trying to obviously survive in many cases, uh, extend the runway. Um, any view on, obviously there's a lot of, uh, you know, uh, hardship in terms of making sure companies keep afloat. Um, but do you see uh, this also as an opportunity uh, for entrepreneurs and especially in the technology field uh, as we move forward uh, on a daily basis, trying to combat uh, what is around us? I, I think that's a very worthwhile statement to stay with for a while because the people we're dealing with as the young entrepreneurs are people who have found solutions of another way to deal with a problem when it occurs. It's that innovativeness that has enabled some of some of the young entrepreneurs to um, operate in in fields that seem to be uh, sort of very mature, but they have found uh, a means of finding a spot or a niche or a segment that they can operate in, operate in differently than, than the traditional way and have done exciting things in that manner. So it would be fair to say that um, we are going to see the same kind of innovativeness created in the same kind of uh, 
situation like you have heard many times over that he was looking at a wall you you found a door in that wall and went through or a window how you look at opportunities and how you package them are are different and this situation does give us an opportunity to innovate but it tests us and it 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 involves going through the transformation of looking at a different way to do things caused by shortages in now in now in this case or caused by uh, strictures or or uh, legislation on the other side new partnerships um, everything's up for grabs if you might so uh, there is an opportunity i'm sure some of the uh, the entrepreneurs are looking at those opportunities and uh, it it would be exciting if we were to find some of these to talk about this afternoon when we when we are interacting no absolutely and and happy to share some examples we found uh, we are also finding that entrepreneurs uh, have this uh, uh, very uh, uh, exciting attitude that we will overcome uh, that's at a at a mindset level um, you're familiar with curefit uh, yourself an investor they started live classes at home live consultations at home one to one trainings all digital in nature and that's actually growing very well and we see that in companies again we are familiar with obviously some of our portfolio companies so you know chirate uh, has found this in healthify me where live classes are going on at home doctor consultations have started at home by many companies in the country uh, overall um, uh, we have a very uh, interesting company called cropin which is enabling uh, through artificial intelligence and satellite visualization uh, quality of crops and that kind of company is actually improving their sales um, and a company like unifor which is bpo sector where travel is under under stress but bpo calls are rising so technology enabling uh, digitization of um, uh, call centers is becoming a big big draw right now so i, I can take many examples here uh, overall and and the reason i'm taking these examples is a question which says do you think technology in the current scenario will actually play a major part in looking at these opportunities and solving the challenges which now india and entrepreneurs are facing or businesses facing um i think the quick answer that i i find is yes now uh, we can find answers in how to how to operate in a new scenario our willingness to do that or our in interest in in finding those new solutions are are the key so i guess one one way to look at this is not to look at the the change the changes that we are faced with but to look at this as a new landscape a new playing field and applying our adaptive and innovativeness to finding solutions and and hopefully looking back and saying uh this problem or this challenge gave us a new way to to do things as you mentioned digitizing at home a uh, new way to to bring your customer sort of into your into your fold to deal with things as as they 
would be in normal circumstances, but the circumstances are new. And uh, I can say that that looking looking at the situation as it stands, uh, I'm sure there are going to be situations where we where we are going to say, "Why did we not do this earlier?" Yeah, absolutely. So, in some sense, you're also saying this is the time where entrepreneurs could look at new business models, new products, new services, new revenue models, which perhaps were not being looked at earlier. Yeah. And what's the mindset of the entrepreneur which you think uh, you know you would advise him to be in today? Because there's obviously a lot of hardship uh, and then cash considerations. Um, so with what mindset does the entrepreneur go into the market today? I think that there could be uh, multiple views on this. One could do it because the entrepreneur is uh, enterprising, unwilling to sit and moan about uh, the, the change situation and the need to undo what he has done. That's one, that's one type. The other type is where it's not looked at as a problem. It's looked at as, as you said, as an opportunity and the excitement of finding a new way to do things. I know in, when I was a younger person in the organization, one of the most exciting times that I have had is where you can sit down with a bunch of your colleagues and brainstorm. Mm -hmm. And what did that brainstorm do? It, it enabled you to look for a different way to do things to beat your competition or to reduce your costs or to change the way in which you operated. And you can't do this as easily in a smokestack industry. But in the enterprises that we're talking to it at the present moment, this could be an, an invigorator, if you might. I, I would like to say that this is where those bright uh, answers come, where nobody says, that's a stupid thought. thought. Everything okay. has, has a value. And so the most innovative people are those that do say, you know, let's get a clean sheet of paper and, and look at another way to do things. And if we're seeing that happen, it could bring about a new way that stops us from being traditional. It forces us to be innovative. And that would be the biggest opportunity we have. The next is, can we be innovative first? Can we do it better than our peers in other parts of the world? That would come later, but just what you said, uh, digitizing healthcare and moving into the home, doc, uh, doctor, doctor's intervention, digitize at the home, because you can see, you can talk, you can feel, you can ex the only thing you can't do is tactically, yeah. tactilely examine uh, something in your hand. <coughs> no, but we're all, already uh, traversed away, away from the tradition as, as we've spoken in the last few minutes. Yeah. And Mr. Ella, this is about businesses. This is about entrepreneurs. Do you think consumers, I mean, entrepreneurs will come with live consulting at home, very 
you know, phenomenal apps, uh, easy to use. And what's your view on consumer behavior? Do you think this uh, scenario which we are in as an economy is also forcing changes in consumer behavior? Yeah, I, I think consumer behavior is, uh, is a little based on little different uh, metrics. It's, it's uh, a willingness to be exposed to the excitement of doing things a different way. It, it deals ex exactly with the innovativeness of the entrepreneur in making this the packaging uh, that he is offering to the customer. If it excites the customer, if, they, if it packaged nicely, well thought through, mm -hmm. I think the consumer will welcome it. He will not resist it. And uh, I think the transformation we saw from the offline to the online, online yeah. uh, has been an indication of, of a large consumer base willing to look at a new way to buy, a new way to sell, a new way to uh, a new experience in in terms of dealing with uh, mercantile issues. And um, I think we're looking at that likely to happen or continue to happen in the future. No, well said. And, and again, uh, I think the other sort of follow-up uh, uh, query which I had was uh, people used to travel to go to a doctor or to go to a gym or you know, buy grocery. Uh, and or even in a B2B business. Now, if live elements come in, digital elements come in, uh, the whole issue of payment, would, would they be willing to pay more or would they be willing to pay the same or would they be willing to pay less? Any thoughts on that? I think there's, um, there's an element of, of the marketplace that would be willing to pay more because more is being done to the product and to the customer. And he looks at that as a convenience to him. He's willing to pay, pay for that. And there's another segment of the customer is, uh, who is doing this because he, he expects to see it being more economic for him. Mm -hmm. And you put those two things together and the consumer has defined what in his mind is an acceptable cost. The entrepreneur has put more in, into that package than the customer had earlier been able to access. And there's a happy marriage there. It's only a new entrepreneur who comes in and, and perhaps uh, tries to dislodge the the initial player in in the field the field okay and, and again we are talking about entrepreneurs we are talking about young entrepreneurs using technology if i may just take a step back and the industry as as you call it the smokestack industry uh, how does the smokestack industry deal with this is it very different is it same is it innovation or is it waiting for this to recover That's, that's a difficult uh, question to answer because let's, uh, in the fear of uh, talking specifics, uh, let's take the steel industry. Okay. Um, the, the inputs to make steel available to the customer cheaper or faster are, are there and have been in use. But there's no clean sheet of paper as another way to make steel. Right. And I, I think there hasn't been a major um, productive input 
uh, after uh, continuous casting, for example, where you cut out two or three processes. So it's different in terms of uh, the product you produce, how you're able to sell it, how you're able to deliver it. All of that is much more imaginative in with the young entrepreneurs that we're talking of and the new manufacturing systems and the whole uh, supply chain is mm. changed. I think, I think in, in many ways, the smokestack industry finds it difficult to change all the, the entire uh, supply chain, can improve on it, but it's by and large tweaking it compared to what's happening in the digital area. However, innovations may be possible in the supply chain, in cutting out um, inefficiencies in distribution chains where possibly technology can help. Yes. In that business area, it could be just as innovative and just as uh, uh, far reaching in its area. And it, it would contribute to a smokestack industry and have its effect in, in, that, in that sense. Yeah, for, for example, mm -hmm. uh, you look at the automobile industry and you look at the changes that are being envisaged today, autonomous driving, um, artificial intelligence being merged in, in terms of application. Um, the industry was there, you had automobiles, what you're seeing today is a new a new world application for for them of shared mobility it's something that you would be laughed down 15 years ago 10 years ago uh, and yet it's happening in a smokestack industry being driven it's, for example, quite conceivable that that um, a leading car manufacturer would be a Tesla rather than a Ford or a GM or a Mercedes. Uh, and they brought a lot of innovation into into the business. And so tomorrow, the largest car maker could be an Apple, um, because it brings to to the table a new approach to to doing something. So I, I think what's happening is the barriers are coming down. Um, yeah, and the one way to look at it is that's being driven by the hardship that we are all facing in the, in the marketplace caused by a completely different phenomenon, namely a virus that's overtaken the world. Absolutely. And I was reading somewhere that if you take all the viruses uh, in the world together, and this is serious, the total weight of that virus is just one gram, which is changing the world right now. <laughs> Uh, overall. Yeah. Um, interesting observation. So fundamentally, even the smokestack industry is being affected by innovation. Uh, after all, uh, Tesla uh, is an entrepreneur who brought it up and, you know, others, uh, you know, whether it's alternative modes of transportation um, uh, or shared mobility, uh, innovation takes place outside the large corporation in a big way. Yeah. Um, Mr. Tala, coming back to, again, the entrepreneur who's building, you know, we saw uh, entrepreneurs going to, you know, many, many crores worth of revenues. And then when the lockdown happened, going down to zero because there was a physical interface. And then, of course, some of them are coming back as the lockdown hopefully starts uh, moving 
uh, opening up and in some cases digital revenue start ramping up we are seeing that on the ground however the the entrepreneur still has to has to do this choice of business priorities versus the human side of things as you mentioned it earlier so what any any thoughts on how to balance this because there is cost efficiency required there is a business requirement but you know you can't afford too long because the cash runway may be small how do you balance the business part with the human things i i'd like to say that that's something i can't answer generally because i think you have to be looking at individual businesses and and the leading entrepreneurs that are driving those businesses in many cases the innovation or the change is driven by the uh, the innovativeness of the entrepreneur rather than the uh, the change is sitting to be undertaken mm -hmm. a couple of things you have mentioned in in your statements uh, the last few minutes uh, correctly indicate that the opportunity is there somebody has to see the opportunity uh, package it in a manner that makes sense debug it and and push it forward so whether you look at music uh, done by apple or whether you look at an electric car from uh, from a non car manufacturer you look at power grid distribution uh, decentralized decentralized power as tesla is doing to the to the home and you look at uh, delivery of medicines and uh, doc and doctor examinations a synthetic uh, uh, general practitioner if you might you look at the in input of data from the patient to the doctor doctor yeah on your wrist or or on some decoder somewhere on your body you look at um, remote medi medicine and surgery it's there today it's uh, it's surgery through uh, manipulators but tomorrow it could be sitting in san francisco with doing surgery in bombay so it's how far can you stretch the envelope and i think what you're looking at and what you're experiencing is there's no limit to that envelope which a few years ago we kept saying we stretch it to its limits right that doesn't hold true today and that's to the opportunity and that's the opportunity but um a hard thing to say is that the virus today has an has an issue of generating those questions and forcing them on us otherwise we would go along until there was a more enterprising entrepreneur who thought it i think we have to look at this as an opportunity to do something that is more innovative than we would have done in 2020 no. yeah well in some sense india did that 1991 uh... Econ the economy back to the wall and India opened up uh, as such. Yeah. And so in some sense, this is a massive opportunity for literally, as you, I think you have said, what you're giving the message to all of us is uh, clean slate, see if you can redraw things 
because those will be much more innovative because the new way of working is very different from what it used to be just a few months back. Yeah. So any specific message you would like to give to entrepreneurs who are out there, they're still dreaming of obviously building companies uh, overall. But before that, the message to entrepreneurs, investors, what, what do you think investors should be doing at this point of time? Well, you know, I think the normal first reaction is entrepreneurs, uh, sorry, investors uh, should be keeping their powder dry. Mm -hmm. uh, and that might seem to be very prudent. It may also be uh, very self-defeating. Uh, that now might be the time when investors should be looking at opportunities like they did in the 70s and 80s, um, where it was driven by the creation of the integrated circuit, or it was created by uh, moving to a digital world or looking at uh, nanotechnology as, as a means or looking at biology or, or, or sub nano uh, driven uh, products, whatever it was, the 70s and 80s were those kinds of heady times when those things happen. So today, one could have a bunch of uh, investors who would say, I'll back this company because it's being driven to do something differently. Yeah. Uh, rather than say, no, right now is not the time to, to look at something new. Um, and I would like to, to say that, to me, the virus will disappear in, in a period of time. But the innovativeness that we bring during these difficult times would be something we could look back on and say, well, there was a good part of what we faced and the hardship that we went through had its up moments, which we availed of. How true, absolutely. And, and do you think India as a country with entrepreneurship and the technology around entrepreneurs you see right now presents to investors globally and in India, in essence, possibly a bigger opportunity in the next few years. I, I think it's not limited to India. It's, uh, I say, what I'm about to say, I say with some degree of concern, you compare our, it's the situation we're in to a world war. Mm -hmm. which was destructive, um, cities got bombed, um, manufacturing industries were disabled, and um, yet it was in those times that uh, many new technologies were developed many uh, scientific, some of them dramatically horrible in terms of what were done to human beings, but science was taken to a new height. Right. Um, out of it came rockets, came other forms of enterprise and forms of destruction. Both were uh, an issue of application, but they were in entrepreneur, entrepreneurs who were supported by their governments to, to 
open new doors, if you mind. That could be the case again. Absolutely. It's not a world war, but it's like a world war. There's a dramatic need for vaccines. There's a dramatic need for solutions. And strange things happen. I, I think we, we really have to look back and say, where did, where did so-and-so innovativeness really have its roots? Quite often, it has its roots at a time of crises. Right. And we have a crisis on our hands today. And so there's an initial, throw your hands up, you have this crisis, and then there's our own innovativeness that comes to play. That's the time we need to support, to invest, to not uh, dismiss something as being too far out, but being a, something we should look at. Absolutely. And you mentioned governments and any thoughts, uh, governments can play a major role. If countries are collaborating, corporations are collaborating more, entrepreneurs are collaborating. Uh, any thoughts on how government can actually support this? Yes. Uh, to take an example, if you look at the US and you look at what organizations like DARPA have, have done mm -hmm. as government supporting new technologies in biotechnology or in um, uh, integrated circuits or, or in a total variety of things that the government has supported three, four, five billion dollars which the private sector would not have been able to do. They have ushered in new industries because of their ability to come up with the funds earmarked for a particular uh, development. And if we had, at a time like this had a way of, of marshalling some funds in certain areas, we could have another another wave of innovativeness arising out of a problem, just like we've had in World War II, yeah, or the or the Cold War. And look at the plus side of that; it caused innovation to take place, which would perhaps not have happened or taken much longer to do. Than, than they have done. They have done. Yes, I, absolutely. And I think government uh, is playing a role and you're aware of the fact that uh, uh, government is supporting the venture capital industry through SIDBI, uh, which is like a sovereign fund of funds uh, in the market. But absolutely, if it's bigger and better, uh, this is like R&D. Uh, tech is like R&D, so it takes a little bit of time to come out, uh, but more is always good. Uh, in some sense, technology, Entrepreneurs, do you think can be GDP additive in this scenario? You know, in a in a three, four, five year time frame. Yes, it can, but I don't think. Uh, I think some things are being driven, like the vaccines, mm -hmm. fighting for time to to solve a problem. But yes, but many of the other areas are one that needs patient capital. Mm -hmm. Uh, they need to be uh, that clean sheet of paper that I keep referring to. Uh, that has to bring something to the table that you have a long-term vision on. Uh, and there have to be entities that support that kind of uh, time phase that, that we will have to go through. And um, you look at, going back to the 70s, you look at some of the early biotech areas, they're supposed to change the world when they 
when they were set out, that was the prognosis that and the driver of of what we did at that time. Mm -hmm. Much of that hasn't yet happened, but it probably will happen. And it wouldn't have even taken form had it not been for the long-term vision of, of the government, of the federal government in the US, science, science coming together. Well, one, one very important thing that I believe has taken place is R&D earlier was in silos. Mm -hmm. You had electrical engineering or mechanical engineering or biology. And they have come together. Biology has become life sciences. Electronics has been part of it. Um, Manufacturing techniques have started to use digital technology to make things better to go from millimeters to microns. And today, successful R&D is multidisciplinary. And many, many things that we see today would not be there if they were in silos today. Absolutely. So maybe there's a new phase of what we have to look at, uh, which today are not silly, they make sense, but there's another page to be turned to deliver something that was not considered possible. Absolutely. Mr. Tata, any final message? I, I think we've learned a lot from this. You're saying India uh, is, at the entrepreneurial world, is innovating, there's collaboration, the, the technology has a role to play. What's the final message for the entrepreneur at this moment? What would you advise entrepreneurs who are still out there fighting this economy fighting the hardships, but innovating. Uh, and they would still want to build new companies. New company or another way to do things in their company? Both, both. Both. I don't think there's, there's advice that can be driven. I think that the the motivator is within the entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Just in the few minutes we've been talking to each other, we have traversed from looking at a collapse of the world around us. And in a few minutes, we've been talking about the future that that may force on us, right. not as a disaster, not as, not as a destruction, but as an opportunity. Right. And it's not you or I that, that makes that happen. It's, it's the drive in the entrepreneur's spirit that enables that to take place. Uh, and so I, I would say that the message that one would give would really be to look at this as a, as a moment of opportunity and use that as a means of seeing whether uh, we can look at new areas in a new way, time frames that were never before considered possible. Yeah. Um, and can we just have a new way to look at things that finally become uh, a, a way of life. What would we be today if we didn't have the web? Mm -hmm. We didn't have internet. Um, if we look back and say, how did we manage without, without it? be a good good soul searching question to ask 
so I, I think uh, my message to an entrepreneur would be use this as an opportunity to innovate more, not to be discouraged, but look at this as a, a real opportunity to uh, look at having a long-term vision, uh, blue sky and, and, and daydream through the whole technology routine. There are going to be areas that you can uh, initiate, not the same ideas that you have in, in the past, but fresh ideas. Ideas, yeah. Well, Mr. Tata, very motivating, very adapt at this moment. Uh, thank you so much for joining us uh, on this uh, call. As you rightly said, if the internet was not there, we would not be talking today uh, yeah. uh, at this moment. And uh, again, wish you uh, safety and health. Um, and hopefully, we'll see you soon then. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Sudhir. And pleasure being with you. And I hope. I hope this has been a moment of opportunity that we will all see and we will stop looking at this as, as another bombing crisis that took place during World War II. <laughs> uh, Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank Mr. you. Uh